Welcome to Owl the Storyteller. Today, we present part three of our series. Today, we're stepping back in time to the late Middle Ages, a period spanning the 14th and 15th centuries. This era, brimming with knights, castles and chivalry, was also a time of immense change and upheaval. Imagine a world where fashion wasn't just about looking good, but also about showcasing your status, wealth, and even your beliefs. This was the late Middle Ages, a period where sumptuary laws dictated what you could wear based on your social standing. From the vibrant hues of dyed fabrics to the intricate details of embroidery, clothing became a canvas for self-expression and societal commentary. Join me as we delve into the fascinating world of late Middle Ages fashion, exploring the textiles, trends, and cultural significance of this transformative era. The late Middle Ages was a period marked by significant events that rippled through society, leaving their mark on fashion. This era, spanning roughly from the 14th to the 17th century, was a time of great transformation and upheaval. The social, economic and political changes of the time were reflected in the clothing people wore, which evolved in response to these shifts. The devastating Black Death, which swept across Europe in the mid-14th century, had a profound impact on clothing styles. The plague decimated the population, leading to a dramatic shift in the social structure. With so many lives lost, the survivors found themselves in a world where labour was in high demand and wages began to rise. This newfound economic power allowed people to invest in more elaborate and luxurious clothing, a stark contrast to the simpler garments of earlier times. With a significant population decline, labour became scarce, leading to a rise in wages and social mobility. This shift allowed the lower classes to access better quality materials and more intricate designs, previously reserved for the nobility. Artisans and craftsmen found new opportunities to showcase their skills, creating garments that were not only functional, but also works of art. This newfound prosperity among certain classes resulted in a surge in demand for more luxurious fabrics and elaborate garments. Silk, velvet and brocade became highly sought after and the use of vibrant dyes and intricate embroidery became more common. The fashion of the time began to reflect the wearer's social status and wealth, with the most opulent garments reserved for the elite. The Hundred Years' War a protracted conflict between England and France, also influenced fashion trends. The long and arduous battles necessitated practical and durable clothing for soldiers, which in turn began to influence civilian attire. The need for protection and mobility on the battlefield led to innovations in clothing design that were adopted by the general populace. Military attire, with its emphasis on practicality and protection, began to influence civilian clothing. Elements such as padded doublets, sturdy boots and reinforced seams became popular, blending functionality with style. This crossover between military and civilian fashion created a unique aesthetic that defined the period. These historical events coupled with evolving trade routes and the emergence of new technologies, created a dynamic backdrop for the fashion revolution that was about to unfold. The expansion of trade networks brought new materials and ideas from distant lands, further enriching the fashion landscape. Innovations in textile production and garment construction allowed for greater creativity and expression in clothing design. As society continued to evolve, so too did the fashions of the time, setting the stage for the rich and diverse styles that would emerge in the centuries to come. 
men's fashion in the late Middle Ages was a fascinating blend of practicality and flamboyance. This period saw a significant evolution in the way men dressed, reflecting their social status, occupation, and the prevailing cultural trends of the time. Knights, the epitome of chivalry and military prowess, donned armour made of chainmail or plate, often adorned with heraldic symbols. These symbols were not just decorative, they served as a means of identification on the battlefield, showcasing the knight's allegiance and lineage. Beneath their armour, they wore padded garments called gambesons for added protection. The gambeson was a crucial piece of equipment, providing a layer of cushioning that helped absorb the impact of blows and prevent injuries from the metal armour. For everyday wear, men favoured tunics, which were long, loose-fitting garments that reached the knee or calf. These tunics were made from various materials, including wool and linen, and were often dyed in vibrant colours, reflecting the wearer's wealth and status. Over their tunics, they might wear a coat hardy, a more fitted garment that buttoned down the front and often featured elaborate embroidery or dagging, decorative scallops. The coat hardy was a fashionable choice for those who could afford it, showcasing intricate designs and craftsmanship. Jose, which were essentially long stockings, completed the ensemble. These hose were typically made from wool or linen and were often brightly coloured, adding a touch of flair to the outfit. They were held up by garters or tied to the waistband of the tunic. As the Middle Ages progressed, men's fashion became increasingly extravagant, particularly among the wealthy merchant class. These merchants, who had amassed considerable wealth through trade and commerce, used their clothing to display their prosperity and social standing. Long-pointed shoes called Krakows became all the rage. These shoes, with their exaggeratedly long toes, were a symbol of fashion and status, often extending several inches beyond the wearer's foot. The length of the shoe was sometimes restricted by sumptuary laws, which aimed to curb excessive displays of wealth. And hats, often adorned with feathers or jewels, were essential accessories. These hats varied in style, from simple caps to elaborate headdresses, and were an important part of a man's attire, signifying his rank and wealth. Feathers, jewels and other embellishments added a touch of opulence, making the wearer stand out in a crowd. The rise of the merchant class brought about significant changes in fashion. As trade routes expanded and new materials and dyes became available, clothing became more diverse and colourful. Merchants, eager to showcase their success, adopted the latest trends and often set new ones, influencing the fashion of the time. Tailors played a crucial role in this fashion evolution. Skilled in their craft, they created garments that were not only functional but also stylish. The demand for custom-made clothing grew, leading to advancements in tailoring techniques and the introduction of new styles and patterns. Social gatherings and feasts were opportunities for men to display their finest attire. These events were not just about food and entertainment, they were also a chance to see and be seen, to impress peers and potential patrons with one's fashion sense and wealth. Travel and trade also played a role in the spread of fashion trends. Merchants and travellers brought back new ideas and styles from distant lands, incorporating them into their own wardrobes and influencing local fashion. Ultimately, men's fashion in the late Middle Ages was a reflection of the dynamic and changing society. From the practical garments of knights to the luxurious attire of wealthy merchants, Clothing was a powerful symbol of identity, status and cultural values. Women's fashion in the late Middle Ages was equally captivating, characterised by elegance, flowing silhouettes and intricate details. This period saw a significant evolution in the way women dressed, reflecting both societal changes and advancements in textile production. 
the clothing was not just about covering the body, but also about expressing one's social status, wealth, and even personal taste. The quintessential garment for women was the gown, which consisted of a bodice and skirt sewn together. These gowns were often made from rich fabrics like silk, velvet and brocade, which were sometimes imported from distant lands, adding an exotic touch to the attire. The choice of fabric and the quality of the gown were clear indicators of a woman's social standing. Gowns came in various styles, from the simple kirtle, worn by common women, to the more elaborate gowns favoured by the nobility. The kirtle was a basic, yet functional dress, often made from wool or linen, suitable for daily chores. In contrast, the gowns of noble women were masterpieces of fashion, adorned with intricate embroidery, pearls and precious stones, showcasing the wearer's wealth and status. These gowns often featured long flowing sleeves, low necklines, and were cinched at the waist with a belt. The sleeves could be so long that they almost touched the ground, adding a dramatic flair to the overall look. The belts, often made of leather or fabric, were sometimes decorated with metalwork or embroidery, further enhancing the gown's elegance. Headwear played a pivotal role in women's fashion, serving as both a status symbol and a fashion statement. The variety of headwear was vast, ranging from simple veils to elaborate headdresses that could be several feet tall. These headpieces were often decorated with lace, ribbons and even jewels, making them a focal point of the outfit. Veils, wimples and the iconic henin, a tall, conical hat, were popular choices. The henin, in particular, became a symbol of high fashion among the nobility. It was often accompanied by a veil that flowed down the back, creating a striking silhouette. Wimples, which covered the neck and chin, were more modest but equally important in the fashion repertoire. Women also adorned themselves with jewellery, from delicate necklaces and rings to elaborate belts and brooches. Jewellery was not just for decoration, it was a display of wealth and power. Gold, silver and precious stones were commonly used and each piece was meticulously crafted to reflect the wearer's status. The emphasis on luxurious fabrics, intricate embroidery and opulent accessories reflected the growing prosperity of certain classes during this period. The use of vibrant colours, achieved through expensive dyes, added to the richness of the garments. Embroidery often depicted scenes from nature or mythology, turning each gown into a work of art. Accessories like gloves, purses and shoes were also carefully chosen to complement the overall look, making medieval women's fashion a true testament to elegance and extravagance. Absolutely. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content like this. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue creating quality videos. Thank you for watching and being a part of our community. Remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest uploads. Your support keeps us going.